It is without a doubt that Napoleon Bonaparte is one of the most legendary and most studied historical figures. Napoleon's rise from obscurity to master of Europe is one of the most fascinating you'll hear, with Napoleon being one of the greatest military minds in history. However, where most people start the story of his military career is at the Siege of Toulon, fought through the latter half of 1793. While the French victory at Toulon is where Napoleon first gained notoriety, it was not Napoleon's first fight. There is an earlier battle in his career that ended in an utter disaster that is almost always overlooked when studying Napoleon. Let's dive into the history of Napoleon's first battle, the Battle of La Madalena. First off, a little backstory on how the Battle of La Madalena came to be and Napoleon's life leading up to it. Prior to the French Revolution, Corsica was sold to Bourbon France by the Republic of Genoa to pay off a debt. With the outbreak of the French Revolution, Napoleon's native island of Corsica was effectively split between three factions, Bourbon Royalists, Republican Revolutionaries, of which Napoleon was a part of, and Corsican Separatists. Despite being, at the time, an outspoken pro-Republic Jacobin, the young Bonaparte was also a Corsican Nationalist and left his unit in the Republican Army to serve Corsican Nationalist leader Pasquale Paoli. I don't want to say this is what Napoleon believed, but a possible thought process here may have been that Napoleon believed the Republican ideals of the French Revolution were compatible with the politics of Paoli as he himself had been president of a semi-independent Corsican Republic from 1755 to 1769. The Bonaparte family and Pasquale Paoli have some history. During the French invasion of Corsica, Napoleon's father Carlo was an associate and supporter of Paoli against the French. After the Corsican defeat, Carlo would focus on his family and would pull back on his fervent Corsican nationalism. He would be elevated to noble status by the French Bourbon monarchy with his biggest responsibility being Corsica's royally appointed representative to King Louis XVI. Napoleon looked up to Pauli, who, during the revolution, had returned from exile in England after his defeat in 1769, but this affection was not reciprocated to Napoleon. Pauli considered Napoleon's father a traitor and a French collaborator, and you could imagine Pauli thought much of the same of Napoleon, a commissioned officer in the Republican, albeit still French army. Both Napoleon and Pauli saw the revolution as an opportunity for Corsica to gain greater autonomy, maybe even independence, and an ostensibly pro-republican unit of Corsican volunteers was formed with Pasquale Pauli's nephew, Colonna Cesari, in command and Lieutenant Colonel Napoleon Bonaparte as his deputy. This force of a little under 500 men was to be used in an upcoming French offensive on the island of Sardinia. Sardinia at the time was one of the two regions controlled by the Kingdom of Sardinia. The kingdom was split between the island of Sardinia itself and the Piedmont region of Italy. The young French Republic did not yet have the strength to go on an offensive into the vastly wealthy Piedmont region, but hoped that a successful invasion of Sardinia would be enough to bring the Piedmontese part of the kingdom to heel, or at the very least, keep the Kingdom of Sardinia out of the First Coalition. This plan pretty much backfired immediately, as in December of 1792, word reached the island of an impending French attack and a significant force of over 10,000 was formed to oppose any invasion. The first French invasion force aiming for southern Sardinia was driven off by a storm and in January a second force was turned back by Sardinian shore batteries. In February another attempt was made by the French and this time they were able to land a force of over 1000 near Cagliari but were driven back by an unexpectedly fierce Sardinian counterattack. Another storm came and destroyed several ships and further plans to attack the south of Sardinia were abandoned. Now, this entire operation was a disaster for the French, but this is not where Napoleon was. There was another plan to take Sardinia from the north using a small force of Corsicans that Napoleon was second in command of. This attack in the north was meant to be a distraction while the larger French force conducted the main attack in the south. Either Napoleon's force did not know of the failure of the main attack or they were undeterred, we don't know. Regardless, the Franco-Corsicans set sail from Bonifacio on the southern tip of Corsica anyway. This new expedition had been bolstered by a little over 100 French National Guardsmen, three cannons, and a mortar. Overall, the Franco-Corsican force numbered around 600 men in 16 small landing ships and one corvette, La Fauvette, where Napoleon could be found with the cannons. On February 22, 1793, the fleet reached the channel of Santo Stefano with the overall goal of taking the fortified town 
on the southern end of the island of La Maddalena. La Maddalena had been recently reinforced by the request of its commander, Major Riccio. 400 Swiss fusiliers were transferred to the island, later bolstered further by about 100 local Sardinian militiamen. Because of this strong defensive force, a direct attack on La Maddalena was impossible, and the French fleet took heavy fire from the coastal batteries. Napoleon and his superior, Colonna Cesare, developed an alternate plan to land a battery on the nearby island of Santo Stefano and try another assault under the cover of this battery. On the night of February 22nd, Napoleon landed with a detachment of National Guardsmen, three cannons and one mortar on Santo Stefano, which was defended by 25 Sardinians. Napoleon opened fire with muskets and cannon fire and was able to kill or capture the garrison with the exception of a single Sardinian who swam to warn La Maddalena. Napoleon, believing to have the element of surprise, implored Cesare to attack immediately. However, Cesare overruled him after a long dispute, fearing a mutiny by the Corsicans. The following morning, February 23rd, Napoleon's battery began firing on La Maddalena. According to official accounts of the Sardinian Navy, the bombardment of La Maddalena was extremely effective and all Sardinian coastal batteries had been disabled after a day of bombardment. On the 24th, the small landing ships of the French fleet attempted a landing but were repulsed by musket fire. The following day, the French tried another attack with the corvette La Fauvette, maneuvering closer to the island to more effectively cover the landing force with its cannons. However, the crew of the ship and landing force again suffered heavy casualties from musket fire. In addition to this, a small Sardinian ship firing incendiaries attacked La Fauvette, causing it to panic and flee along with the entire landing force. Cesare gave word to Napoleon to prepare to withdraw from Santo Stefano Island. La Fauvette came to pick up Napoleon and his men, but refused to load his cannons on the ship as they did not want to linger and potentially expose themselves to any further attacks. Napoleon was furious and ordered his men to spike the guns before embarking. Apparently, Napoleon's escape was a close call, as when the Sardinians landed back to take Santo Stefano, they took a small number of prisoners. Additionally, the fuse Napoleon set to blow up his powder magazine was still burning and was put out by a Swiss fusilier. There would be no further attempt to take La Maddalena, and the Franco-Corsican force would return to Corsica. Napoleon had some very strong feelings about the conduct of his superior during his first action. Napoleon wrote a scathing letter, blaming Colonna Cesare, saying he had secret orders from Pasquale Pauli, who was then himself receiving secret orders from Britain, to sabotage the mission as part of an effort to weaken the French hold on Corsica and pave the way for a British takeover of the island. Now, if you're familiar with Napoleon, you'll know he's also a great self-propagandist, and much of this statement is dubious and likely just his anger speaking. However, there is a small element of this that is true. Pauli was in the past a beneficiary of the British and had no serious commitment to the French Republic. Despite this, there isn't really concrete evidence of a convoluted Anglo-Corsican plot to sabotage the attack on La Maddalena. Regardless, the French Ministry of War sided with Napoleon's report on these events and deemed Pauli, his nephew Cesare, and the Corsican contingent of the expedition traitors. This little series of expeditions to Sardinia seems like a sideshow, but had a lot of serious repercussions. The crackdown by the French Republic on Pauli and Corsican nationalists led to a British-supported revolt that eventually drove the French off the island. Napoleon and his family were forced to flee to mainland France as refugees. The seeming ineptitude of the Republican military gave the already shaky local government of Toulon cold feet, and they would declare for the exiled French monarchy and invite the British to occupy the city on August 18th, directly leading to the now legendary Siege of Toulon, where Napoleon first truly shined. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, give it a comment, maybe even a little subscribe action. I'll see you soon with another one.